Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do my quilt with me Monday. And I do have a video for applique made, but I didn't have a chance to get it edited. So I thought that I would just come to my long arm and do some doodling since I haven't worked on the long arm in a long time. So I thought that would be a good idea. Um, I also went to a workshop over the weekend with Dusty. And I actually purchased a ruler kit from him. And I did originally come to the machine so that I could show you the designs. But I'm having difficulty unsnapping them in a timely manner. So what I'm going to do is work with these to get them a little loose. They're kind of like puzzle rulers. And so they actually unsnap. But I'm having difficulties with getting them to unsnap quickly. And I actually like that because then it means I, doesn't, I don't have to use masking tape. Which is what he said you will have to use eventually in the end. But I do need to like open and close each of these rulers a few times. I will show you what I bought. And then um, I'll come back on another video and actually demo. But I will do a little doodling with the pebble ruler and I'll just show you that. I am actually going to do some quilting and then I am just going to put my camera on the machine and just let you see what I'm doing and I will be right back. I'm using a ruler from a workshop that I purchased from Dusty Saturday and it's called the Pocket Pebbler One and it's actually one of the puzzle rulers where you can pull it apart and you snap it around your hopper foot and it also makes three sizes of circles and I'm using the middle circle which is three quarters of an inch and you can also make one half inch and one inch circles. Now I have made some registration lines on my fabric and you stitch one and a time one and a half times around each circle and then you slide the ruler down and the ruler has little nicks to show you where the center is and those lines are to use for lining up your points on the line and you have to remember that it's the line markings you want to keep track of because as I go down, I, I did forget that a couple of times. So I'm showing you this in regular sewing speed. So notice I took off in the other direction this time. So when I do my one and a half times, I'm not putting heavy thread on just one side of my line. It's going to alternate. So I slide down and now I'm going to go to the bottom. Now I probably would recommend using some of those Invisa grip dots on the back of your ruler because I was having a little difficulty with the ruler moving. I'm holding the ruler down so hard on my base plate that my machine don't want to sew. So it's a fine line with that too. Again, I'm making these videos for new long armors to show what you have to go through to actually get good at this process. This is my absolute first time using this tool. As I said, I just purchased it Saturday at a workshop. So it's st strictly a learning curve for me. So here I have decided that I want to do a scallopy line, so I just freehand a line that I'm going to now try to follow with the ruler. Again, I'm starting out with having the lines on the ruler, and at one point during this process I did forget to line up with the line on the ruler with the line that I've drawn, and I did bypass it one time thinking that I needed to be in the center of the circle. It's actually line to line and you stitch line to line. 
And I think this might be the circle where I bypassed it when I went back around for my half. Right there, I'm bypassing the line, and I should have stopped right with the blue line. And once I realized that, I did get very good with using this method, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this part of the video up. see I do have a straight line and then it goes into a slightly wavy line so now I'm just going to do some free motion work I start out with my machine in the regulated mode but I do switch it over to constant what I'm using to put with is polished poly thread from YLI it's a two ply triglobal polyester thread and I think this Spool has 5,500 yards of thread on it. This is neon green, and what I'm actually stitching with is neon orange. So, the neat thing about this thread is that even though it's not a glow in the dark thread, you can see it very well under black light. So, I'm cutting off all of my lights in my room except for the two black lights that I have on my sewing machine. So you can already see how the orange thread is glowing like it's a glow in the dark thread, but actually it is not. Um, I really do like this thread because as I was changing it over from my Permacore thread, which is what I normally put with, I didn't have to make not one adjustment to my machine. So I really like that. Here I'm starting out in stitch regulated mode and then I stop a little bit in and go into constant. I've decided that I needed to uh, go back to sewing in the constant mode because when you're sewing continuously it's going to make you move. You can't just sit there and let the thread build up happen. So I will make some mistakes as I'm quilting this but I'm okay with that. This is a practice piece to just get the brain acclimated to constantly moving the machine somewhere. So I just did an echo of the pebbles that I put down and I'm coming back along those echoes. And again, they're not perfect and I'm okay with that. So then I start getting into more doodling. And I have absolutely no plan, but I find that when you make a mistake, you just keep going and you add something else in that's even prettier than what you were trying to make, that it tends to take your eye away from your uh, mistakes. They're not quite as obvious the more you fill in. I will admit to being um, a quilter since I'm doing most of my own quilts. I am a quilter that I very rarely will take any stitching out, so I consider all of this a learning curve, and then I also have something to look back on as a reference point in the future. So if I make mistakes, I don't tend to take them out too fast. It's got to be just very, very bad for me to do that. And this is at real-time quilting. I have not sped this video up, and I have not slowed it down. 
I'm stitching at a constant speed of 34 on my gamma vision. So you can see there where I made a mistake. But the thing is, you've got to keep going. You can't stay in one spot and hoover over a mistake. So that's a good point for stitching in your constant mode. You can't hang around and be, oh my gosh, I messed up. What am I going to do? You just got to keep going. So I think I stopped the machine and slowed it down a little bit to like maybe 30. Now I got some other things out of Dusty's um, workshop I went to on Saturday and I had recorded them all on my camera but apparently it timed out so I don't have that footage so I will come back as I'm doing demos and I will tell you what I got from him anyway. So I'm sorry I don't have the footage of where I did the haul of what I purchased, but I really didn't purchase a whole lot. I just got uh, the five puzzle rulers that do circles, squares, ovals, diamonds, and hexagons. And they, of course, have different names than what I'm calling them, but that's the basic shape. And then with that came a booklet on how to use those particular rulers. And then in addition to that, I got his four-way ruler, which to be used with clamshells and things like that. So I won the two spools of thread as a door prize. So I did not purchase those. But I really like this thread, so I got a new thread that I can use in my machine now. And I just love how it's stitching in the night light. In the, I mean, in the black lights. <laughs> so. so I'm just letting this stitch out just so you can see the path of how somebody will doodle. So I'm just adding in any shape that I think I can make. Sometimes I find I can't make what I'm thinking. I can make and so that's okay too this is just a practice piece and my camera actually ran out at this point I actually did a whole lot more doodling and it's going to run out in a few seconds here and we're going to come back with the lights back on so I apologize in advance Okay, I have rolled my quilt, and if you look back behind my uh, hand, you can see where I did some additional stitching that is not shown. I've completely lost that footage. And now I'm back with Dusty Scapula Swirl Ruler. I actually purchased this ruler in a set when I was in Paducah, and haven't really used this ruler either. So I am trying to test it out and I'm already finding that because I'm left handed and I have my power on my left that I'm having some difficulty with keeping the ruler flat. I did add some invisible grip dots on it so that it wouldn't take over the markings. I didn't want to use something like sandpaper that would take away from me seeing through the lines on the ruler. So this is not perfect. Again, this is my first time using this ruler. I'm just trying to make sure I understand the concept basically this ruler will go in and make your stems for your feathers if you've got particular heirloom quilt that you want all of them to look exactly alike you can do that you come back out the swirl anywhere you want and then you can flip the ruler to the other side 
and make a reverse curl. You don't have to switch the ruler to the other side, but you can. So that's what I'm going to do now just to test it out. And I don't have any dots on this side of the ruler, so it, it really may slip here. As I was stitching this, I realized that I really like stitching from this side of the ruler better than I do from the other side with my power still being on the left side of the machine. So that was an eye-opening experience. It looked a lot better on that side. So just to make sure, I went back and did one more on the other side. So if you wanted this fine to go in a particular place, you could pre-mark kind of where you want it to go just to get, you know, some reference points. But since this was just a practice piece, I really didn't care. Saturday was a very long day for me. I actually went to Dusty's class from 9 to 3, and then I had a line dancing event the night after that, and it lasted until 1 o'clock in the morning, so I was very tired by the time I got in bed. So I did not get a chance to play at all with the machine. So I'm just tying off here so that I can go back and try to see how to fill this in with some form of feathers. Now again, I am not a feather expert. I am showing you this from the beginner's perspective. Um, it's very difficult to always see things that are completely perfect and it makes you not want to put anything on an actual quilt. So I'm just showing you the things that I go through if this was on top of my quilt, I would still leave this into my quilt. As I said, I'm, I'm not quilting for, uh, for hire right now. I'm just trying to get a lot of my own works in progress completed. So again, I come out of there. I don't know what to do, but it's going to keep stitching because I'm in constant mode. And it doesn't care if I don't move. So that's the one thing about constant mode. It will make you remember that you can't just hover in a spot for a long time. I also think that stitching with the constant speed over regulate that my stitching looks a lot better. It's a lot smoother and I never would have thought that but apparently when you're stitching with that regulation mode where you think you're stopping and where it stops stitching are two different things because I find these curves are a lot smoother. So I'm just going to work my way back up into this next swirl. And again, I'm just practicing. I have no inkling of what I'm doing. I have not pre-planned this. I have no drawn out grid beside me. I'm just one of those people that just like to get started. I can only draw on a board or in my book for so long. I just do a lot better if I just go straight to the machine and start. Even if it's a, a mess, at least I've done something over nothing. So this other side was a lot more complicated and I had to really get my brain wrapped around these feathers here. And then after a while, from here on out, I think I started to get the pattern for it. But it does take a minute for your brain to switch over to the other side. So I do believe that it takes practice. I just like to do practice on actual quilts and or on a practice piece of, of a quilt sandwich. I just don't want to always be in the book or on a piece of, you know, writing in a, my doodle book or on a piece of paper. Because then I feel I will never come to the machine at that point.
And while I'm stitching these feathers, you can kind of get a sneak peek of some of the other stuff that I put up at the top. I actually did some feathers up there as well, and then I went back in each feather with a kind of a straighty, curvy line into each feather. So then I just came down here. I was just kind of tired of doing the feather, so I just filled in the swirl with another swirl just to put something in that space. And then I came down and decided to go to show you this other part of the tool. If you noticed on this scapula, I went around the bottom part of this swirl and then you also have that top part where my hand is currently placed over at the top. So I'm going to show you what that is for. So again, I'm just putting my machine back on stitch regulated mode. Whenever I'm going around the template, I just tend to go ahead and use stitch regulated mode. And then when I go back into freehand, I change back to the constant speed. Now you go past just a little bit where that opening is so that I can then go around the inside on the other side. So I've got to readjust my hand and now I can swing up in the top. You can't be directly in front of it, you've got to be down just a tad so you can get at the right angle. So then I just go inside there, sweep back out. And you can stop anywhere along the big part of the spine to start your next curl if you like. And you can also flip this ruler any way you like as well. You can use the front side or the back side and do these same curls. So I'm just going to show you by laying the ruler down that you can still flip it to the other side and have your curl up there if there wasn't any quilting up there. And I'm not doing anything um, with this particular curl that was really special. I just wanted to show you how you can actually get two curls in one pass. And now I'm just going to go back down to the end of the swirl and just put in some hooks. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. I know it's just me quilting, but I think sometimes you need to see somebody just running the long arm and doing free motion, unplanned pathways of quilting because I think it makes a big difference and then you're not so afraid to actually get in there and just start quilting something. It's not so serious. As long as it's quilted, sometimes that's good enough for me. Just use one of your uh, pieces that you are not trying to make an heirloom quilt out of. But some of your more everyday quilt tops, it's fine to just doodle over the top of those. Quilts that you're going to give to charity where you may have people walking on them, it's great. So thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye for now.